Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Today we are going to take a look at the Marvel Legends Venom. And oh my goodness, is this a sweet figure. If you like this video, just hit the like button, smash the subscribe for me, and let's just get into it. So I've actually been looking for this figure for a pretty long freaking time, and of course during one of my toy tours that I've been recently doing, I walked into a comic book store, and sure enough, there are two of these bad boys staring at me from across the room. Now of course it's always at a time where you have no money in your bank account, or you feel like you don't anyways. I've been focusing my collection mostly on small-scale Batman the Animated Series figures, but of course Hot Toys and 1-6 scale. So do I need this Venom in my collection? Well, let's look at the box art. First of all, it does draw you in. Now, honestly, the box art's really, really similar to Hot Toys box art, uh, except obviously it's a smaller scale and it's a much cheaper cost. I like that if you want to keep the box art, you can open it up on the side slot like I showed there. But truthfully, I have a really hard time justifying keeping these boxes. I intend to take them out. I want to play with them a little bit, right? So when I get them out in the clamshell like this, I'm looking at it going, I don't know if this needs to take up space physically in my mechanical room. And I already sit on a lot of Hot Toys boxes like most of our 1-6 scale collector friends out there. <laughs> so I chose personally to eliminate these boxes, but at least you got the option. The figure himself is beautiful. These close-up images that we get a chance to look at here are blowing me away. Now, Zach from Collecting Weekly, good buddy at this point, has been telling me a little bit about black washing figures and, you know, adding some paint to them just to add a little bit level of realness to it. And I think that's a great idea. He mentioned that you could kind of do a wash over the veining, which makes it a little bit more realistic, as well as a wash over the teeth. And I agree. I think if you're able to pull that off really well, that's going to look really freaking sweet. Because this figure already looks really cool. I love the way the tongue comes out. I love that he has multiple head sculpts. So he's got this kind of evil grinning face, which is really cool and iconic from the film as well, of course. Now. I've always been a big Venom fan, so I'm a bit of a biased opinion, but I love the proportions that we're seeing from the figure. Look how big the shoulder caps look. There are some unsightly gaps. It's a cheaper cost for a figure, right? I mean, this isn't one six scale, so naturally we don't expect seamless arms joints for, for this scale, which is okay. They're a little bit unsightly, but when you get a chance, as I said, to zoom in on some of the head sculpts and you get to see some of the paintwork that's already present here, I mean, his skin texture looks a little bit wet, which is awesome. And when you get him under different lighting, especially here, I use Philips Hue lights in my display and I love it because it's such a broad color spectrum. You can shine that color spectrum on figures like this and it really, really brings it to life. It also makes it really ominous looking, and for the scale of this figure, it actually pairs pretty well with other scales uh, similar to McFarlane's size. I put him with my McFarlane the Batman figure, and he's a very similar size. Naturally, I think Venom overall would likely be bigger than Robert Pattinson's Batman, don't get me wrong, but if you don't necessarily collect full toy lines like McFarlane, but you just like to collect some of your favorite figures in this scale, or some of your favorite characters, I should say, this is a great option. Now, the posability is pretty decent. He is a little bit stiff to start, so you actually do have to press the joints a little bit harder than I normally would like to, uh, in order to kind of get that paint to move a little bit. But he bends at the elbows, he has some really good twists and swivels at the shoulder joints, his hands do, of course, twist, and come out because he does have multiple hand sculpts. You saw that in the packaging he has two fists as well as these two open kind of claw-like hands. The legs uh, come out to about here, they bend at the knee, 
I do like that they swivel at the ankle as well and pivot, which is really nice. It does look a little bit like he's wearing a Venom shoe, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, but that's okay because again, I actually really like that this figure has some crazy poseability. Now, we're gonna get into some poses here in a few minutes, but even when I take a look at him kind of laying down, I like that his back arches, I like that his head turns both directions, especially with that tongue out sculpt like that. It's really cool, and I'm digging it, honestly. But let's get some poses going with this guy. Let's see kind of what we can do. Now, also, any of you guys listening, if there's a Spider-Man you recommend that I should pair with this figure, please let me know in the comments. Because, like, look at this pose. I could totally picture Venom wrapping his hands around Spider-Man's head, holding him up in the air by the neck, right? So cool. I need a Spider-Man to go with this guy. So let me know in the in the comments, guys, what is a good one to pair with. I just love the look. I The fists go really well as well with this figure. You know, it doesn't matter that he doesn't come with a huge array. I think that just the fact that he has a level of ominence to him, when he poses, even like this, with his shoulders kind of broadened and his leg out, with just a couple claw hands, <laughs> that screams Venom to me. I was blown away. I didn't expect to like this guy as much as I do, truthfully. And especially the tongue out head sculpt. I thought I would lean towards the smiling sculpt. But the tongue out just kind of adds that level of venomness to the guy. I'm not gonna lie. But what do you think? What do you guys like more? Do you like the tongue out sculpt? Do you like the smiling sculpt? Who do you pair this figure with in your collection if you have it? This makes me want to look more into the Marvel Select lineup. But I also recognize it's a bit of a slippery slope. And while I say that these guys are cheaper figures, they also still do kind of cost a pretty penny. So that brings me to the rating of this figure. I would give this guy a solid 9 out of 10. I think it's really cool that he comes with the multiple head sculpts. I love the shininess and the texturing of what his skin looks like. I love the posability of the figure. He's got way more presence than I ever expected a figure of this size would have for me. I think the value for the cost of this figure is bang on for where it should be. And overall, I am very happy. I think I may customize him a little bit with some of the paint washes like we talked about earlier. And if I'm being completely honest, I wish he had the Venom logo on him like the classic comic book look, but I recognize that's not the character design from the film, so you can't really knock him for that. It's just a hope. It's just a wish for the future. Let's get some more Venom figures from this line. If Marvel Select does this well with more of a classic suit look, oh, I would be all over it. But ultimately, I want to hear from you guys on these videos. I love hearing your comments, so send them my way if you get the opportunity. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. We're getting close to 200 now, really trying to hit that goal, so I appreciate it. And I will catch you guys on the next toy video, unboxing, bigger review, toy store tour, all the good stuff we're planning on bringing to the Ben Thomas show. Thanks for watching, everybody.